Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the five part of the audit of inventory in the warehousing cycle. So we're going to look at the inventory and warehousing cycle and break it down into five components and see how we tackle the inventory cycle. Now make sure to review what we looked in the prior session. In the prior session, we'd look at the introduction of the inventory and the warehousing cycle in which we looked at the six functions in the inventory and the warehousing cycle. There are six functions in the inventory and warehousing cycles, but we have five parts of the audit. So the audit of the inventory and warehousing cycle is divided into five activities within that cycle. What are those five activities and how do we audit them? The first part, it's going to be acquire and record raw material, labor, and overhead. So that's, that's the first part. Remember, as I told you in the introduc in introductory video, inventory part of it is part of sales and part of it is part of purchase so this cycle in the inventory is already audited in the acquisition and the payment cycle and i showed you the acquisition and the payment cycle in the other recording now after we move after we buy the material we transfer it from raw material into production this is the second cycle this is the second part of the audit we're going to transfer assets and cost within the company so transfer it from from uh, from the storeroom to the production now in this cycle we're gonna this is an inventory and warehousing cycle so this is where we account for the transfer so the client our auditee will account for these activities in something we called cost accounting record so what we need to do, we need to examine this cost accounting record in details. We need to know what are the proper internal control for the cost accounting record. And this will be the next recording. But the point is, this is what we're going to start to be doing inventory and auditing. This is the first part we look at. Because this is how we account for inter internal transfer of inventory within the company. Okay, through the cost accounting record. Then, once goods are completed once goods are produced what do we do with them we sell them we ship them and we sell them and this is part of the sales and collection record so this is where we account for the shipping documents sales invoices so on and so forth now what else do we have to do as part of auditing the inventory cycle we have to physically absorb the inventory so the auditor must it's mandatory must observe the client taking the physical inventory count why we want to know what is the dollar amount What's the unit, right? We're looking for the quantity. Uh, we're looking to see if the uh, inventory is still in saleable condition. Is it still in good condition? So we must do so. It's not optional, okay? And this is going to be part of the inventory and warehousing cycle. And by the way, I just wanted to post something real quick here. That in 1938, well, 37, 38, depending on, you know, when it was discovered, when the investigation took place, there was a company called McKinson and Robbins. What I suggest you do, most probably it's part of your audit course, but what I suggest you do is to Google. Google McKinson and Robbins. And the reason I don't talk about it, because if I talk about it for five minutes, it doesn't give it a lot of justice. So this way, what I suggest you do is to Google McKinson and Robbins. And after this case, observation of physical inventory became mandatory. So the AICPA, what they did, it, this, this case was a landmark. This is when the AICPA said, going forward, auditors will have to um, observe physical inventory. Now you guessed why. Well, obviously, McKinson and Robin, what did they do? They conducted one of the largest fraud of their time at that point by claiming almost 20 million, almost 20, like 18 to 20 million of, of inventory that did not exist. And here we are discussing 20 million in the 1930s not 20 million now maybe 20 million now is not a lot of money for a large corporation but back then they had 20 million of inventory that did not exist and the person that uh, conducted this uh, this uh, musica um, uh, a very interesting individual so that's why i suggest you you uh, you google the case maybe at some point i will have a recording about the case because it's a very very interesting case so this is part of the inventory and warehousing cycle and we're going to spend a lot of time on this uh, physical observation so don't worry this is just an introduction uh, we're going to maybe spend 30 to 40 minutes about how we do, do we observe inventory last but not least is we the, uh, is we have to price 
price and compile inventory. So here we, we figure out what the inventory is. Now we need to determine based on the valuation, FIFO, LIFO, the weighted average, are they using the same method as in the prior year? So this is also part of the inventory and the warehousing cycle. Once again, this is just an introduction. We're going to spend 30 to 40 minutes on this on this subject as well. Looking at their internal control, how to do perform this properly, how to perform inventory compilation tests, so on and so forth. But this is just an introduction. In the next session, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by performing the audit of the cost accounting. So, so the next thing we do is we look at specifically inventory and warehousing cycle and specifically how to audit the cost accounting system of, um, of the company. Now, then we're gonna go into analytical procedures, then we'll look at the physical observation, then we'll look at the price and compile inventory cycle. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. Once again, this is a very brief session just to introduce you to the uh, cost accounting uh, uh, part of the audit. Make sure study hard if you're studying for your CPA exam.